This video is your guide to the new Trust Sepsis Pathway in less than 10 minutes. Why is there new sepsis guidance? Sepsis is a major cause of patient harm and death in the UK and worldwide. Affecting about 100,000 patients in the UK with more than one in three patients dying. Sepsis also costs the NHS £2.5 billion per year. As well as substantial mortality, sepsis is also associated with significant physical and psychological morbidity in survivors in the longer term. Common sources of infection are chest, pneumonia, urinary tract, UTI, skin or soft tissue, abdominal, meningitis. Early recognition and appropriate management are key areas for improvement to optimise patient safety and survival. Not just in the northeast of England, but also throughout the rest of the UK and worldwide. Early appropriate treatment is associated with reduced risk of death. The chance of dying from sepsis with management, according to national treatment protocols, is 20%. But this rises to 44% without the correct management. When patients with sepsis have severely abnormal physiology, this is termed red flag sepsis. Did you know that for every one hour delay in treating sepsis associated with a low blood pressure, there is a 7.6% increase in mortality? These new guidelines have been released in order to equip you with the knowledge and tools required to be able to recognise patients with red flag sepsis early and commence appropriate treatment, whatever your training background. So how do we improve the recognition of red flag sepsis? Any proof of or suspicion of an infection with any of the abnormal physiological variables, red flags, below are diagnostic of red flag sepsis. Red flags are systolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeters of mercury or mean arterial blood pressure less than 65 millimeters of mercury. Reduced conscious level, V or less on AVPU scale. Respiratory rate greater than 25 breaths per minute. Supplemental O2 requirement to maintain SAO2 greater than 90%. Lactate greater than 2. Purpuric rash. Heart rate greater than 130 beats per minute. The presence of one red flag means the patient has red flag sepsis and requires time-critical delivery of the sepsis 6 within one hour. The clock starts now. So what next if you suspect your patient has red flag sepsis? The sepsis 6 bundle formulates the key treatments to be initiated in the first one hour when you're suspicious of severe sepsis. And its use has been associated with a significantly reduced risk of mortality. Sepsis 6 includes Oxygen, aim target saturations of 94 to 98%. Aiming for saturations higher than 98% will not increase tissue oxygenation significantly and may be harmful in some situations. Fluid, appropriate to requirements. Overly aggressive fluid resuscitation has been associated with worse outcomes. So review regularly. 
cultures. Blood, urine, sputum, other cultures as appropriate. This allows appropriate antibiotic selection and reduced use of long courses of broad spectrum antibiotics. Antibiotics within one hour, ideally after cultures, and in line with your hospital's antibiotic guidelines. Lactate, which predicts mortality in septic shock. Fluid balance, accurate monitoring of hourly urine output, plus or minus catheter. Plus, senior review, ST3 and above. This should all occur within one hour of first suspicion of a patient having severe sepsis. Audits throughout this trust have highlighted that initiation of the sepsis 6 is an area in which we can improve. At present, only around 50% of patients with sepsis are having blood cultures taken. And there is a mean time delay from suspicion of sepsis to antibiotic delivery of 361 minutes. Quite significantly longer than our target, 60 minutes. So, to summarise. 1. Have a high degree of suspicion for sepsis. 2. If you suspect sepsis, then always screen for red flag sepsis and start the pathway. 3. Always reassess the patient after initial treatment and beware of late red flag criteria. 4. If any red flags present, treatment is time critical and you must act immediately using the sepsis 6. Together, we can improve our recognition and management of patients with sepsis and tackle this significant cause of patient morbidity and mortality.